Well, good morning. How are you? Good. Good. I'm super excited. I'm here with Stacy and Stefan. And uh, I'm going to have you guys start right off the bat by introducing yourselves and telling us a little bit about you and what it is that you do. Um, Stefan. Oh, I was going to say ladies first, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're always introducing ourselves on this group. It's wonderful to be out here in my hometown in Escondido as Coach Stefan Rudolph. And I help others with epilepsy recovery as well. I've been sober 10 years and I have survived brain surgery and multiple epileptic car accidents, all this big, long story that we talk about. But it's the new seed in life as I'm down here at Grape Day Park in Escondido. And there's some a grape slide and everything. So <laughs> the new seed in life is for us to help plant that seed and other lives out there and overcoming and transforming yourself to the next level and taking that healthy path for epilepsy or whatever you want to whatever you need help with but we're definitely here for that area to help others so stacy and stacy please okay. introduce yourself and tell us about you <laughs> i'd be happy to um so my name is stacy chalemi and i developed epilepsy at the age of five i started out with a cold and an ear infection then got a little virus and the virus had traveled to my brain and it had formed into encephalitis um i went into a coma for four days and they thought I was going to be paraplegic or have severe brain damage. And um, luckily, by miracle, um, I came out. And um, first thing I asked for was McDonald's French fries. And, um, you know, uh, they told my parents that, you know, she doesn't have anything like like uh, brain damage. And she obviously she's not paraplegic, but she does have epilepsy. So epilepsy had um, been a, uh, a hard struggle throughout my life. You know, it, it would took, you know, many years to get controlled. I, they started me out with phenobarbital when, you know, that was a drug back then. And, you know, it controlled me for a little while. And then when I got into my teens, my seizures came back, the hormones started. And, you know, they eventually got me controlled somewhat, you know, and I would take, you know, X amount of seizures, you know, and I would take probably like six to nine seizures a month, you know, and, you know, it was a, it was a very hard struggle. And then, you know, life was like a roller coaster ride. That's the best way to describe it, you know, but right now I am controlled and it took a, a long time. You know, I didn't drive for 15 years, but, you know, I went through some really tough hardships and I learned how to um, cope with the disorder. And I want to teach others, you know, I'm very excited. You know, I've been working with people for many years, helping them overcome their disorder. Cause I believe that we don't have to let our disorder control us. We can live a happy, healthy, and productive life. If you have the right tools and strategies and you focus it on a certain way. Yeah. And it's, uh, and I'm Liz Nichols and I got epilepsy at 21 um, my life was amazing, traveling, going to school, had a place of my own, a good job, um, had been through college, you know, out of the blue. At 21, the epilepsy hit, and I had it uh, until I was about 40. Um, and again, just like everybody else here, lots of medications, lots of jobs, friends, licenses, lots of medical bills. Um, I got a clean bill of health at 40, thinking that meant it was gone. But at this point, mine is just dormant in remission or hidden. Um, and one of the things I learned through getting some uh, coaching was that I had this incredible passion to help others that had epilepsy. So that's why I developed my business that helps others uh, and provides coaching for um, specifically women with epilepsy so that I can hopefully help them through struggles and uh, interesting scenarios that I went through. So that's just a bit about me. And so guys, what should we talk, or ladies and men, what should we talk about today? I think you mentioned, well, I think we have some exciting news. Who wants well, to- Well, some, some news I think I wanna bring up is the, the awesome idea, and I have to compliment myself, about five years ago, I thought, as I was five years sober at the time, I have to reset my mind and reset my life. And every day from wherever I heard that phrase or came up with it, the secret, John Asaraf, working in coaching, Wayne Dyer, I kept saying, reset your mind, reset your life. Don't get too hard on yourself. Don't be down on yourself. So you're going to hear the crows in the background too. But there's always a lot of background noise in life. How's that? And you got to be able to deal with it. And I said, reset your mind, reset your life. And I thought of control, alt, delete. So I thought this would be a great name for a book. And then finally, I just said, I need to put it into action. And about a year ago, I started 
you know, putting down ideas. And then just last week, put it down into a spreadsheet. And now we're getting some authors out there. So I wanted to introduce that. And also Stacy, Liz, we're going to be on there um, getting other authors, maybe 12 co-authors to have a, have a great book about life in general, overcoming epilepsy. Maybe it's alcohol, maybe it's depression, anything that you've overcome out there. We want to get some coaches some anybody that has that background that it wants to get involved in this and have a book about that. What do you think? Well, you ladies? know, and so many people, um, Stacey, you mentioned it earlier, and it's something that I found people don't want to talk about epilepsy or they don't want to talk about various different yeah. topics. And it's important to talk about it because there's, what is it, 50 million, I think, people in the world have yes. epilepsy. And, you know, it's, um, I'm thrilled that we've all come together because, you know, together you're stronger. And the topic yeah. doesn't talked about and a lot of people with epilepsy do have you know um certain things they deal with on a daily basis they don't want to talk about it and i think if you're talking about it you're feeling better you know there's other people out there that have it as well as you so it's like a nice little community and you feel supported you know i you know what came to my mind is when you say all control delete it was funny because my new books i talk about retraining the mind because you really have to retrain your mind and you know what i found just like you said liz is as you know for years i've been helping people with epilepsy and what i've seen through my experiences is that a lot of people are either one it's too painful to talk about and so they repress their emotions and they just let it build up inside i meet a lot of people that have a lot of inner anger and they suffer from depression because they keep repressing their emotions because they feel alone and that's why i named one of my books you're not alone because people feel that other people can't understand them and one of the biggest things when i was working with the pharmaceutical companies companies and I was working with people, patients with epilepsy because I was on an advisory board, a couple advisory boards for different pharmaceutical companies, given from a patient's perspective, because they wanted to understand the patient and we, they wanted to understand how patients think. And what I've learned, you know, and I told them is that patients don't you know, they don't want, when they see their doctors are like, you don't understand what I'm going through. You don't have it. You're just the doctor. You're taking care of me, but you don't know what I'm going through. And there's a lot of anger there. And, you know, we have to realize that the only way to release and, and to get better is to talk about it. Like you had mentioned, Liz, there's over 50 million people worldwide with epilepsy. Everybody I talk to knows somebody with epilepsy. When I started talking about my new book, you know, people had come out and said, oh, I have epilepsy. Oh, my cousin has epilepsy. Oh, this one has epilepsy. There's more people than you think out there with epilepsy. And it wasn't until I wrote my first edition of epilepsy epilepsy you're not alone that you know i had you know realized how many people have epilepsy because what before i wrote the book i asked people to you know i asked people to write letters i had sent it into the epilepsy foundation and they published it for me how do you cope with epilepsy and hundreds of people from all over the united states wrote to me and you know talked about how they cope with epilepsy so you're not alone there are so many people out there that are struggling from epilepsy but the only way to get better is to talk about it you know and that's why it's so important to be with group of people that understand where you're coming from people who have the disorder people could understand what's going on because they're going through it with you but they're ahead of the game because they figured out ways to make you know things better and to be able to live life in a healthy happy and productive way and they want to teach you those 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 tools and techniques so you could live a good life yeah absolutely there um and before i forget the uh stefan started a group um and it's called healthy and we will post the information we have a, a facebook page um and we have a private group we've just started um, gee, I think just a couple months ago, right, Stefan? And yeah, so that's how page, we connect. It's been wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, and so the page is called Healthy, and we will post the information um, about the Facebook page and the private Facebook page, both called Healthy. And that's you know creating a community of people to come together with, just like what Stacy just said, and and Stefan, um, a community where you can talk and have conversations, and um, you know. Come together support each well, other see, yeah you're not, not alone, alone like, like stacy says people, sorry a lot of people out there have it and they don't even know it and i just spoke with a racquetball friend of mine so i play a lot of racquetball i've been competitive 
I was just out in Texas for the national championships, brought some medals back, and it's been wonderful. And I found out another uh, player who's a very high-level player has seizures and has epilepsy and has dealt with it his whole life. So I was talking to him, and it's kind of interesting that his story, he says, is just very basic. He doesn't have much of a story, and I, because I invited him on our show here, and he goes, I don't know what I'm going to talk about, because it's just kind of common sometimes for people to have it and deal with it all their life, but they don't have a lot of grand mal seizures. Uh, he has a lot of small malls. He just deals with it, um, kind of zoning out for a little bit, coming back, people looking at him strange, you know, <laughs> every day it's just a different part of life and you, you don't know you're having it and it goes away and it comes, it comes and goes, he says a lot, but he has, it hasn't affected his life in years, but it, you know, I think everybody has their own story and we need to get these stories out there to others to help people. And that's where coming up with a group like this, I think is great. Oh, I think you're on mute, Liz. Yeah, I don't hear you. Oops. There we go. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to repeat you. that. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, we encourage um, everybody listening to this, and feel free to invite your friends to come and check out our Facebook page and the private group, and let's get the conversations going. I know when I was growing up, it's that you didn't talk about it, and your family yes. didn't talk about it. And I remember, I think I mentioned it to you guys once before, where somebody said, she's a really nice girl, but she has epilepsy. Yes, I got yeah. that a lot, too. I got yeah, that a lot, too. There's such a, a stigmatism around it. And uh, I think it's great. And we're all very bold to want to share our stories and talk about it and create support and communities to help others. Uh, and that was one of the things that I talked about on the advisory board. There is a lot of stigmatism still, you know, it's getting better, but there is still a lot of stigmatism. If you see, there is not a lot of things out there for epilepsy. And a lot of people don't even know the Epilepsy Foundation, what it is. And if you see, there's lots of stuff about diabetes. There's lots of stuff about breast cancer. There's lots of stuff about cancer and all these different other illnesses. But when do you hear anything about epilepsy? You don't. And, you know, people, if people don't know about it, they fear it. And that's the problem. And just like you said, a lot of people were told back in the day to keep it quiet, you know, and I even, you know, I was working in the city, I had a great job. And then one day I felt an aura and I fell to the ground and I had a partial seizure where I was consciously awake, but I was like frozen and I couldn't move. And I, you know, someone, you know, had, had stepped that's over the me. Guy, the guy walked over you, right? Yes. That's so significant. Significant. Tell tell them about what happened. You yeah, it, I was having a seizure and I was laying on the floor and I was partially awake so I could see everything around me, what was going on. And a co-producer just stepped over me and kept walking. And I was like to myself, I was like, oh my God, he just kept walking. He didn't even try to help me. And then 30 minutes later, a co-producer came over and said, oh, Stacy, I'm so sorry, but you don't meet the requirements. I'm going to have to let you go, you know, and that was that. And I just walked out of there, you know, I, I, I wasn't going to let it make me feel any less of a person. And I just found a, a different, you know, pathway and just started to do different things. And, you know, with my life and, um, you know, people, if they don't know what it is, they fear it, they think, you know, they, they don't, you know, they don't know how to deal with it, or you get the empathy. There's sympathy and there's empathy. And it's like, you don't, nobody, everybody with epilepsy hates that empathy. You know, we don't want to be, be, oh, you have epilepsy. No, I'm just like you. I'm, you know, okay. Yes, I do have seizures, but everybody has something, you know, everybody on this planet. If you talk to anybody, either they suffer from anxiety, stress, high cholesterol, you know, high blood pressure, everybody has something, you know, we shouldn't be X'd out because we have epilepsy. We shouldn't be thought about any differently. And the thing is, is that, you know, it could be scary the first time someone sees somebody have a seizure, but if we educate people, it won't be so scary. So, Sometimes you know, people, I've noticed this at Christmas too, when, when I was sober one year, uh, or two years maybe, and my cousin, you know, we used to drink beers, everything, and he, he's asking, who wants a beer, who wants a beer? Oh, I got you one. Oh, Stefan, oh, you don't drink. And I'm like, right in front of everybody, and I just go, oh, thanks, okay, you know, I don't want a beer, and it's gone, and people notice that, or they have, you have epilepsy, you have a disease, and then they let people know for some reason sometimes, you know, oh, he's dealing with cancer, oh, he's dealing with epilepsy, he's poor him, or poor her, right? Right. And that's 
people want to get this group together to help people have a strength and inner they call it intersizing intersizing yes. program by john astaraf and it really helped me understand that better right to that's again control out delete don't let others affect you be stronger within in order to deal without their criticism right Yes, and that's one that was my my next book. It's coming out on Monday. It's called Empower Yourself. Don't let your 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 condition empower you. And I put condition because I I wanted it to be for everybody. This one is for epilepsy. I talk about my epilepsy in the book, so I use myself as an example, but basically it's for everybody. Don't let your condition empower you and stop you from doing the things in life you want to do. You have one life and you have to live it and you have you want to be happy you know you why waste your life you know in pity in sorrow and 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 why stop from trying to do the things you love the most you know there are ways that you can if you retrain your brain and you retrain the way you think and you incorporate positive thinking you could do a lot to your you know to your inner strength and you there are ways that you can make yourself feel great about yourself and do all the things you want in life no matter what you have you know, and this is so exciting. The um, what I'll do is uh, we'll make sure that um, all the contact information for all three of us is on this video, and uh, then I think we'll all upload it to YouTube. So please feel free to reach out and join the uh, the private groups. Check out the pages again, or reach out to any of us if there's anything we can do to help any of you. And again, we will uh, put the information um, on the end of the video. So. Hey guys, this is amazing. Um, and everybody, we're going to continue these all the time. And anybody have any last thoughts before we log off for the day? Well, Real I was, on, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say that we were talking about maybe putting together some groups where on, on the platforms where we could have discussions with people and people could ask questions and, you know, we can, you know, talk about, you know, different topics on different days and then people can reach out to us and ask questions and ask for, you know, whatever has come to mind. And, you know, we were thinking about doing that on Facebook and maybe on YouTube and Twitter and, you know, especially Facebook, because there's a huge epilepsy following on Facebook and we can you know there's there's zoom meetings that you can put live and you know we were talking about maybe doing that to help people and to, so people can just reach out to us and actually ask us specific questions and we could try to help them the best way we can and stefan any final thoughts yeah putting this all together to work together to grow together to be there for it for everyone out there um, in this area of, of life where people need it the most is what we just went through and grew through was the lockdown, the two years of lockdown. And I compare it in my book coming out too, that I had a 14 year lockdown. I had a 14 year lockdown of epilepsy, of alcoholism, of addiction, of escapism. And when lockdown showed up in March, 2020, I was kind of like, this is, this is what I'm here for. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of, it, it's a weird thing to say, but I was ready for it because yeah. I had already experienced it. And it wasn't that big of a deal because we, I still have my driver's license. I still have my job. Things were okay. But things in my life with epilepsy, I lost my job. I lost my driver's license. You lose everything. Yeah. You know, parents. I just, the person I spoke with yesterday, he's 52 living with his parents. And right. Different, different situations, but there's, there's things that go on in our life that say we have to change and we, and we have to be there for others and everything happens for a reason. Yes. You know, there, there's points where you have to transition in life and accept it instead of fight it. Yes. The worst thing you can do, what you resist, persists, right? Yes, 100%. Negative, you're gonna end up just like this old train sitting here in Escondido, still sitting there in the past. You're gonna end up living in the past. So we wanna help people take their life to the next level in this group. And if you have ideas too for control, alt, delete, if you have authors that you wanna recommend or you yourself, please reach out to us as well on here. Hey, you guys have an awesome day. I love yes. that we're together to do this and um, um, have a great day. Bye for now. Bye bye.